A warm welcome and thank you for joining us at our digital CF Experience Days. My name is Thomas Wenzel and it is my pleasure to have you join us today for CF's first virtual experience day. The transport industry is facing enormous challenges. With the integration of WAPCO four months ago, we significantly expanded our speed, performance, innovative power, our global network, and last but not least, our product portfolio. As our industry accelerates towards the next phase of mobility, our goal is to harness the increasing intelligence on board trucks, buses, and trailers, and leverage our advanced technology portfolio and systems integration expertise to further increase vehicle safety, efficiency, connectivity, intelligence, and automation of commercial vehicles. We at CF call this mobilizing commercial vehicle intelligence. And despite corona and difficult general circumstances, we have already made great progress towards this mission during the last four months. Today, we have no less than four world premieres waiting for you. In a minute, I would like to introduce the two leaders of our commercial vehicle divisions to share with you the strategy that we are pursuing with regards to commercial vehicles and fleets to realize a safe, clean, and profitable transport management. Just some quick organizational notes in advance. We, we're happy to discuss also your thoughts and questions, and we would like to encourage you to actively take part in this virtual conference. You can post questions directly in the question field, which will be available here over the course of the event. These questions are only visible to you and the moderator. We will answer these questions in a, to all extent and as much as possible afterwards. You can also share comments in the chat window. These comments are visible to all participants. Additional information is listed in the more information area on your screen and will be updated throughout this event. But now, welcome to Frederick Stedler and Andreas Moser. <laughs> Thank you. Frederick, can you tell us, tell us a little bit more about the strategy behind the new setup of CF's commercial vehicle business? Thank you, Thomas. You just heard about our ambition to mobilize commercial vehicle intelligence. We believe our industry and our customers need partners who can offer smart and integrated solutions to meet the massive challenges they are facing like cost pressure, strict emission levels, the need for better road safety, and many more. But just more of everything will no longer get us closer to this goal. We need to get better and use more intelligent solutions to leverage further cost and operational benefits. And in order to provide our customers with the best possible and most comprehensive product portfolio on the market, we have expanded our capabilities by taking Vapco on board in what we call a truly perfect match. In a moment, Andreas and I are delighted to give you a first impression of what the newly formed commercial vehicle business at ZF has to offer. We see our drive to mobilize commercial vehicle intelligent as a key enabler towards ZF's vision of defining next generation mobility. We are currently experiencing a transformation in all mobility areas, electrification, automated driving, and digitization. Our claim is to play a leading role here in making mobility cleaner, safer, and especially for the fleets, more profitable. For transport, this applies to all areas, from inner city people transportation and delivery traffic to public transport to long-distance haulage and fleet services. ZF is focusing on all four technology domains, all of which pay into our next generation mobility corporate strategy. These are the areas of vehicle motion control, integrated safety, automated driving, and electric mobility. From our position of strength, we are developing technology roadmaps and are already offering solutions. Whether a customer wants to use our systems integration capability to augment their own technology strategies or wants us to provide a full turnkey solution. 
And we see the topic of digitalization equally in all four technology fields as a driver and as a connecting element. So you just heard it. Only four months ago, we finalized the acquisition of Wabco. And Frederick, you talked about the strategy. But could you tell us more about the rationale behind this move and especially about the perfect match you have mentioned before? Gladly, Thomas. First, there is the complementing portfolio of competencies and products. Breaking and stability control systems. Clean, compressed air management systems, which can greatly improve the efficiency and uptime of vehicles. As well as a widespread portfolio of specific trailer technology and applications. And also fleet management systems. All of this so far has not been part of the ZF portfolio. For our ambition, mobilizing commercial vehicle intelligence, we would have missed a significant part here. ZF, on the other hand, features great experience and expertise in driveline and chassis technology, additionally in sensors, and a sound expertise in systems integration. You can see both companies complement each other in their portfolios on digitalization and automation and electrification. But not only complementary elements have spoken for the acquisition. What additionally connects us is the innovative spirit that shapes the culture in both companies and the pursuit of a common vision to serve customers across the world wherever trucks, buses, and trailers are designed, manufactured, or operated. At Vapco, the strategic alignment was characterized by the expressions ACE, automated, connected, and electrified. This goes in line with our ZF vision, which puts us on the road to vision zero, a commercial traffic landscape in which accidents and CO2 emissions are eliminated as much as possible. A very customer-centered approach in both companies had already led to a cooperative and extremely productive relationship in numerous projects between both companies in the past. In the new constellation, we are now able to implement our strategic objective even better. Our integration process is underway at full speed. And within the first few months, we can already see that what we have envisioned is coming to life. We are jointly working on a series of innovation projects, and we have tangible products in the making. So, Andreas, we've heard about the perfect match. Now it literally makes CF a one-stop shop for commercial vehicles. Where do you see the most obvious examples where both com companies can leverage synergies? To sum it up, today CF is a technology pioneer and an integrated system supplier for trucks and buses, combining intelligent components, critical vehicle dynamics control systems, and many other solutions and services, as well as helping to harness the power of digitalization to bring additional benefits to operators across the logistics value chain. Especially in terms of trailer expertise, we have significantly added to our efforts, and we understand tractors and trailers even more as a unit in terms of telematics, fleet management, as well as brake coordination and brake recuperation. This enables us to offer products that have a direct positive impact on costs, efficiency, and safety, and thus to create significant added value. This is certainly true for the transport industry with trucks at its core, but is equally true for bus technology. With the acquisition, we are able to actively shape the future of the transport industry in freight and in passenger transport. That's quite impressive. And a look at the systems overview we've just saw makes clear how ZF can provide all key technologies for both segments. ZF is more than ever an integrated system supplier for the commercial vehicle industry. But let's break this down to technology fields. How do our customers benefit from that, Andreas? Of course, we can show you exactly what this means with the following three subject areas, which are efficiency, safety, and digitalization. Let's take a look at electrification first. CF electrifies everything. Electrification is decisive in terms of efficiency and CO2 reduction. 
Our portfolio ranges from the individual component to the complete system. It's scalable and it's modular. With our X-Trax, AVE, and C-Trax electric drives, we have already been able to record enormous successes. And as of 2023, we will have electric drives for weight classes of up to 44 tons in our portfolio. We cover the entire range of electrification from hybridized vehicles to purely electric solutions, from e-transporters to electrified trucks. Our range of electrified components has once again grown considerably, as it now also includes the trailer sector. And trailer, that's your specialty, really. <laughs> Thank you, Andreas. That's right. And one very impressive example is our e-trailer. This semi-trailer with integrated electric motor can convert the conventional truck, if coupled with it, into a hybrid vehicle. This saves up to 16% fuel, an enormous gain from the TCO perspective. The electrically driven trailer is included in the driving dynamics control systems for a higher level of traction and safety. In order to implement this, the control electronics of the traction vehicle must communicate with the compressed air brake and spring systems of the trailer. On a global level, you will only receive this integrative competence from ZF. With synergetic technologies, we reduce emissions and increase driving safety. Andreas, that sounds a little bit like efficiency is only determined by electrification. Besides that, where do you see potential for improvement of conventional vehicle layouts? They will continue to dominate the picture on our roads for quite some time. You're absolutely right, Thomas. That's why we not only focus on electromobility, but also on lightweight and aerodynamic concepts that can contribute significantly to more efficiency. Our lightweight future truck with OptiFlow, for instance, is a world premier. We've targeted aerodynamic measures as well as lightweight design concepts. We realize significant savings potentials compared to conventional concepts. Thanks to aerodynamic improvements at the rear and at the sides, 7% savings in fuel costs can be achieved. The additional OptiLevel system automatically controls ride height to improve fuel economy. And with lightweight construction measures, we achieve 150 kilogram weight savings in the tractor alone, which of course be directly added to additional payload or batteries. Weight savings have a direct effect on higher revenue. The new components also provide more installation space, an important approach for electric vehicle platforms or fuel cell technology. So, actually, CF is able to leverage huge potential by means of these combined measures. Efficiency, however, is only one side of the coin. Commercial vehicles must also become safer. And safety, that's a topic for you, Frederick. Safety, indeed. Yes, every accident in which a truck is involved is one too many. But we are proud to say with ZF technologies, we can contribute to commercial vehicles that care. With our integrated systems, we make the roads safer. This is decisive for our customers. We can only achieve more social acceptance of commercial transport with a higher level of safety and fewer truck accidents. In the light of increasing transport volumes, we need this acceptance in order to maintain supply chain and infrastructure in the future. And one thing is for sure, more safety can only be achieved with a plus of automated systems. Based on the see, think, act strategy, ZF can offer a comprehensive portfolio of assistance systems and automated functions for all vehicles. For this purpose, ZF supplies the necessary sensors, the intelligent control unit, and the actuator. The acquisition of Vapco supplements ZF in important components especially with the actuators for braking technology and compressed air systems. Overall, we have completed our portfolio and can now offer ADA systems for all vehicle categories. In addition to more safety, the automated systems also offer considerable efficiency gains, as our next world premiere shows. The Advanced Reversing Assist. The Advanced Reversing Assist is an innovative ADA system to support the driver when reversing truck 
trailer combinations. The system features a trailer-mounted rear camera and a first-of-its-kind articulation sensor which cover the blind spot behind the trailer. A smart HD image processing algorithm enables periphery monitoring without the need for additional sensors. Another industry breakthrough. It utilizes information from a digital rear camera as well as a first-of-its-kind articulation angle sensor to offer the driver guided reversing paths. The advanced reversing assist increases safety, efficiency, and comfort by helping to avoid collisions with obstacles, pedestrians, or other vehicles. And while we are at it, another world premiere is coming your way. Our automatic coupling assist. The automated coupling assist is the industry's first fully automated coupling assist system that enables the truck to detect and to hook a specific semi-trailer. It controls the tractor in longitudinal, lateral, and vertical direction for an optimized coupling maneuver. It provides additional safety, efficiency, and comfort for the driver and for depot operatives. This enables more than 50% reduction in coupling time. On the technical side, the system requires competencies for the drawing unit as well as the drawn unit, an overall competency that you can only get from ZF. This also applies to our ADAPT platform. This software platform leverages instant stability control of automated vehicles in real-world operating conditions. ADOPT provides the automated vehicle's virtual driver with an intelligent control interface and links it to the vehicle's motion control system. The ADOPT approach simplifies and accelerates the development of automated driving applications for virtual drivers, autonomous driving artificial intelligence. Well, it's really a firework of innovations to take in, all based on the new structure we have formed. We have seen four world premieres, the lightweight future truck with OptiFlow, the advanced reversing assist, the advanced coupling assist, and the ADOPT platform. There is no doubt about it. With the newly combined resources, CF can make systems a reality that can really make a difference in terms of efficiency and safety. And at the hand of ADOPT, at the last example, you can see most clearly what the future is all about. Right, Andreas? Yes. It's all about software. Software will be one of the biggest influencing factors in the future development of vehicle systems. Safety and efficiency are no longer to be increased without intelligent software. And software also plays a key role in optimizing fleet operations. Yeah, <clears throat> Andreas, let me quickly jump in here. Fleet operation and fleet management with corresponding solutions and increasingly, are increasingly becoming a strong differentiator for us. ZF offers intelligent connectivity and software solutions to optimize fleets and their fleet management and leverage all potentials. This makes fleets more environmentally friendly, more efficient and safer. From free fleet management to driver management or intelligent cargo management, Z offers, ZF offers packages to make transport as efficient and safe as possible. For example, fleet managers can monitor the condition of the vehicle using remote vehicle telemetry. Numerous software solutions are available. Andreas. However, software is becoming increasingly important in the vehicle itself, as all important functions are software-driven. Especially when it comes to achieving higher levels of automation, software will be a key differentiator. The further expansion of own software competences is therefore the top priority at CF. Together with Microsoft, we plan to adapt the speed and quality of our processes, methods and solutions in software engineering to the role model of IT companies. Thanks to this change, ZF can use its global resources more efficiently and respond better to customer needs. We use Azure cloud services and development tools, as well as Microsoft's experience in agile software development. Going forward, ZF will also be a supplier for software-only products. And our future developments and products will include ZF software gene through further functionalities, such as the ability to update over the air. 
So we have now covered all three subjects, efficiency, safety, and digitalization. And we've heard about impressive solutions for each single one of them. Let's finally take a look at CF as a whole and at the size and capacity of the new commercial vehicle business that is a part of it. What does CF and its commercial vehicle unit look like in numbers then, Frederick? In numbers, ZF as a company is represented at 261 locations in 41 countries. In commercial vehicles, our globally connected R&D network with a team of over 3,400 passionate, dedicated employees is spread over 18 development centers in eight countries. And ZF alone has filed more than 3,000 patents in 2019. Our commercial vehicle expertise is also represented worldwide, as you can see. Our focus is on a close proximity to our customers, so we can quickly find suitable solutions for the local market. When it comes to service and aftermarket solutions, we are always close to the customers too, no matter where. With our increased number of locations, we have further expanded our worldwide support and service on site. Thus, ZF's new commercial vehicle business is considerably stronger and more present in the markets than ever before. In 2019, the revenue of ZF's commercial vehicle division reached 3.7 billion euro, while Vapco's revenue accounted for 3.4 billion US dollar. Following the acquisition, 30,000 employees are now working in ZF's commercial vehicle business. They operate at 61 sites and in 21, 28 countries. We have engineering centers in all regions, which enables us to add local homologation and to support regional specificities for our CV customers. We are well positioned to shape the future of transport and at the same time plan to significantly expand the contribution that commercial vehicle business can make to the group's overall revenue. In 19, before Vapco acquisition, this share was 12%. So, thank you to both of you, Andreas Moser and Frederick Stedler, for your presentations and insights into CF's commercial vehicle business. Ladies and gentlemen, you have seen CF has made a crucial step in making our mission of mobilizing commercial vehicle intelligence a reality. As a holistic system supplier for trucks and buses, we are able to bundle speed, performance and innovative power and offer our customers a complete product portfolio for the commercial vehicle sector via our global network. We enable the next step towards next generation mobility, a safe, efficient, connected, intelligent and automated mobility in the commercial vehicle sector. We have the key areas of efficiency, safety and digitalization well covered. And our four world premieres stand proof of the enhanced capability we have created. For our customers, bus, truck and trailers, that means in a nutshell, more system solutions coming from one single supplier. More value to the fleet and trailer markets and above all, a stronger global partner by their side when we together tackle and master the challenges that lie ahead of us. We will now directly start with a Q&A session and bring you in with your questions, but you can also enter in the ask field on your screen. If you are on full screen mode, just push the escape button and then the, uh, you will see the, um, a template where the ask field will pop up where you can enter your question. So we're looking forward to this discussion with, the, uh, with Andreas and Frederick and um, yeah, here are already a couple of questions. The first goes towards automated driving. And the question is, where do you see the first applications driving? On the streets or yards? What is our time frame for this? Maybe we can take the two world premieres we presented, Fred Frederick, and yes, you can answer this. Of course. Thank you very much for the question. I'm looking for the camera. Thank you very much for the question. Um, Obviously, um, we share our view also with our customers, and we believe that automated driving clearly will come to the applications of commercial vehicle 
first, as opposed to passenger cars. And here, in this field of commercial vehicles, first to the restricted areas. This is where we have developed our use cases. That's where our um, innovations, where our product development is um, focused on. And that's why you've seen also two aspects of um, solutions that are particularly usable in the use case of a freight yard, uh, a depot, uh, with the two innovations that we shared with you earlier, the advanced reversing assist and the automatic coupling assist. Yeah, thank you, Frederick. And uh, Andreas, maybe you could take the topic of electrification. The question is, electrification does also mean long distance applications for trucks and buses. And if so, when do you see real serious applications? By 2025 or more towards 2030? Yeah, thank you, Thomas, uh, for addressing that question to me because electrification electrifies me. So having started in, with buses um, more than 10 years ago, we have collected a lot of experience. And uh, we have prepared our portfolio also for downtown operation when it comes to trucks. But uh, as you all know, the, the, the battery uh, is somehow a limiting factor for long haul uh, transportation, both for loads, for, for cargo, uh, and for, for, for passenger transport. We have seen first uh, applications in China in coaches, but these are not really long, uh, long distance coaches. So um, with the upcoming initiatives uh, related to hydrogen, fuel cell, uh, this will be an important game changer. So from, I would say from the middle of this decade, from 2025 on, we will see first applications also in the long haul trucks and also in coaches. That will be really a booster for e-mobility in long haul transportation. And the other one, according to you, who will make the race? Battery or fuel cell? Fuel cell, I think we, we all have seen uh, a lot of initiatives. We have seen uh, OEs teaming up to develop that technology. Um, we have to develop our own competencies when it comes to fuel cell because we have to understand the entire system, not only the final part of, of, of the driveline. That's one thing uh, we tackle. And the second thing is, of course, that we have quite a numerous uh, range of customers who expect more than just the electric drive unit. So we will also take care about supplying entire systems uh, for a fuel cell drive. Yeah, and maybe let's stick one moment also to electrification, Andreas. Um, could you give an, an outlook? What does it mean for the, uh, for the rollout of electrification in different uh, areas over the globe? Okay, yeah. Uh, China. China is really the first uh, region implementing uh, electric drives in buses. We have seen that from 2013, 2014 on. Uh, so with a huge speed now mainly my, mo most of the buses in, in China are driven uh, by e-mobility. Uh, we see now also uh, a trend in Europe. Uh, that's good. Um, electric buses become more, uh, more popular right now. And um, I'm proud to say that also for truck, we have got the first serious nomination for electric drives for trucks. So we are preparing for an SOP in 2023 on. So we see really uh, uh, big steps moving forward when it comes to e-mobility. By the way, this is another world premiere we would have shown at the IA today. <laughs> yeah, we come to this later. Um, Frederick, uh, let's um, go back to safety. Um, according to you, what is the main driver for um, the uh, um, uh, for safety? Is it more the legislation or is the industry driven by itself? Again, the, <clears throat> the, the fascinating world of commercial vehicles, Thomas, obviously is that it's very, very, very specific region by region. Um, and uh, this is our passion uh, in, in ZF, uh, complementing with Vapco, that we really look at the regional specifics. <clears throat> and here there is a, 
uh, there's a vast area and, um, of different legislative drivers. Um, we, we can see in some, some of the regions, some of the countries uh, further push in um, safety-related uh, topics. Um, for example, I'm just thinking about the, uh, the China ABS with pedestrians that is propelling and excelling our innovation driver development and our customer solutions in a specific area. So yes, it's regulation, Thomas, come back to your answer. Uh, to your question, but it's different uh, country by country and region by region. But we as ZF now with the full portfolio that we have in our hand, we also see ourselves as uh, the go-to company, the go-to supplier for partners that um, develop a lot of the technology fields themselves, but also for partners that are looking for turnkey solutions. So we see our responsibility also to drive ahead of legislation, safety elements uh, into the vehicles with our components and, and actively engage in the dialogue uh, with the legislators and of course with the end customers to see where the fleet operators are using um, their vehicles and what safety means for them in a bus depot, in a freight yard, uh, in a mining environment, uh, in, a com uh, in a container terminal and so forth and so forth. So we have to monitor both. Uh, legislation, legislation country by country, but also drive forcefully our automated solutions into the market where the use cases are available today. So safety is not related to roads only, but it already starts in um, specific defined areas such as freight yards and others. Safety for ZF is, uh, is, is at the core of the core um, because we are all about safety. Safety of employees in these very difficult times, uh, safety of our uh, products and uh, safety um, with our products into the final, final vehicles. Um, and therefore, we look at all the elements. Um, the Vision Zero um, just underlines that, yeah? zero accidents. It's all about safety. Yeah. Let's switch the topic and go to software. Yeah, I have a question here which goes in a, um, into this direction. And um, if we are claiming ourselves a... Uh, a software company and um, that software, and we consider that software is playing a key role in electrification. So what are the benefits uh, um, to accrue as a tier one major company? And what is the um, customer benefit out of our software competency? Yeah, let me, let me give you a simple uh, example by uh, remote monitoring of our components, that, uh, that uh, sort of digitalization helps us uh, a lot to minimize downtimes. When it comes to optimizing uh, the fleet operation, uh, there are so, so many huge benefits uh, where you can really uh, reduce fuel consumption. So, and and dig digitalization is, is much, mo uh, much more than when it comes to the fleet operations, we see how you can really optimize uh, the, the fuel uh, consumption and, and, and safety. And, and yeah, it's, we have gone a first step with our products, with our components to digitalize the products. But now there comes a lot of things on top, which makes really operation more, more uh, much better than, than without that. You know. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more, uh, Andy. Um, we see ourselves as the partners in uptime, as we talked about many times, to really use um, um, the new solutions, software capabilities to, uh, to further increase uptime, because that, that is what counts to our end customers. That's a good thing about commercial vehicles. It's not just fun, it's commercial. <laughs> yeah, it's a, at least a clear target, and that's for sure. Yeah, um, well, Frederick, maybe you can take this question, you know, um, and it goes like this. This CF Webco merger lead to, uh, does it lead to any comp competition issues? Um, here, Martin raised this question. Is primarily thinking of the joint venture with Bosch and Knorr Brems in regard to garages and the aftermarket um, services we provide. Are there any other fields of cooperation that will turn to competition or that will be cancelled? Or, or generally, maybe you can elaborate a little bit on the aftermarket situation. Yeah, of course. Well, first of all, maybe I can expand the question a little bit uh, to <clears throat> the, um, the messages I gave earlier about the complementary portfolio 
of products, of solutions, but not only that, also, of course, of people and cultures. So before we uh, celebrated our day one, uh, Vapco joining ZF, uh, we had to take care of uh, a couple of approvals, uh, antitrust uh, filings, and of course, in this course, there were some divestures um, that took place. So in essence, the, the answer to your question is, um, we took care of the overlaps um, uh, before we, we merged, and uh, in the merge, basically, the two companies are as they are. So no plans here. So your specific question is related to all trucks, um, where we have, uh, um, um, just like other companies, an input um, in, uh, in all trucks concepts, and that's not changing. There's no plans to change that. We don't see any conflict. OK, thank you, Frederick. And um, let's dig a little bit. You also tackle the area of the yeah, organizational setup in the future. But, um, Andreas, how will um, um, how will it ta how long will it take until the uh, merge or the full integration of Wapco into CF will be reflected to uh, um, to all countries? Or what are the general plannings of the organizational setup we are about to um, we, we intend to have? Um, in the near future? CF has uh, very consciously decided uh, to take some time before we merge the two divisions. So uh, the WAPCO, as it's called now, the CBCS uh, division, has been integrated as a 10th division into CF. We want to take the time to find uh, the best setup for a combined division uh, that will take I would say another 15 months, and uh, by 2022 on, we want to have a combined division. Uh, let's find, uh, let's work on the synergies, and let's find uh, the best organizational setup. Uh, and we are on a very good way for that. Um, and uh, let's take the time, uh, not to hurry too much, but also, of course. Uh, giving a clear signal to the external world and, of course, to the internal world. Uh, that, that was a very conscious de decision not to start from day one on with a combined division. And you already made some achievements, as we've seen. Yeah, the, um, and, of course, interaction started from day one on uh, when it comes to others and some other fields. And, frankly speaking, I'm overwhelmed uh, with what I've seen in the last months when it comes to the truck and trailer combination. This is, I think, that's outstanding in this commercial vehicle world. Yeah. Frederick, here's another one. We talk quite a lot, in, or you talk quite a lot about our systems competency we will bring to the market. Mm -hmm. Does it mean, on the other hand, that you will neglect uh, the component business? Yeah, not at all. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, customer is as, uh, as diverse as you can think. Uh, we service you know, many, many OE customers globally, regional ones, bigger ones, smaller ones, in uh, trucks, in buses, in trailer market. We have uh, a lot of trailer customers worldwide, over 1,000. Um, we have a lot of fleet um, that solutions that we deliver, more than 10,000 aftermarket customers. So these, the answer to your question is as wide as the customer base. Yeah? There is customers that are looking for specific solutions on components, and there are other customers that are looking for more of a turnkey solution, and we are here to say we are the partner for all. Yeah? And we work with the customers um, in, at the end of the day, increasing their uptime, and if it's a full system solution or component, uh, um, to us, it has the same equal weight. Customer first. That's, that's it. Customer first, you said. Uh, by the way, maybe um, there's another question. Um, we've seen the uh, um, the sales. Okay, was made in 2019 by the two uh, um, at this time independent companies or commercial vehicle uh, sectors. Um, what share for the CV business um, um, in the uh, in regard of a CF or the whole CF group? Do you expect in the future, or are there any targets given? <laughs> The targets are high. One plus one is three. <laughs> that's that's clear. Uh, if we com if we think about 2020 figures, that's 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 difficult because we have seen a huge deterioration 
especially in the first half of this year. So the combined division uh, will have on a 2019 level approximately 7 billion euros of turnover. Uh, and so it's in the 20% range of, of CF. And what I would like to say is that uh, acquisition of Wapco is a huge contribution uh, of CF to the commercial weekly world. So it's, it's really a, a, a big commitment uh, for our commercial weekly world. A big boost. A big boost indeed, uh, a big boost for a commercial vehicle inside ZF, um, and you can feel that in the, in the passion and in the working together of our engineers, uh, how they drive to work with each other, work together, find solutions for the marketplace, and commercial vehicle is a bigger portion now of ZF's global pie, uh, and with that comes a bigger responsibility, uh, but also bigger opportunities to drive ACE, uh, automation, electrification, digitization in commercial vehicle and driving the, the vehicle intelligence that we spelled out in the beginning. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> There's one question. You talked a lot about the, the time frame. We're about to, uh, to, uh, to merge the two uh, um, commercial vehicle divisions um, over the course of 15, 16 months, uh, 15 months from now. Um, a very... <laughs> On to your question, where will the new division be headquartered? <laughs> yeah, I, I, can, I can gladly take that. Thanks for that question. I think uh, you will see more of a, of a hybrid model here as well. Uh, we have different technologies that have different expertises um, in different technology centers. We are developing our products in a commercial vehicle arena everywhere in the globe. Uh, in Europe, in India, in, in China, in North America, and South America, uh, we will have headquarters in all the regions. We will have also headquarters in Europe. We will have headquarters for uh, some of the technology areas. So um, there is not going to be one headquarter per se. It's going to be shouldered on, on many locations, many people, and uh, many sites. Yeah. Thank you for this, Frederick. And um, it's another one on... The also on the on automation, um, do you think that level four commercial vehicle autonomous driving will be seen or uh, materialized in the U.S. first? Um, what, what, we are, what we're developing, what we're doing right now is we're looking at uh, automation from both sides, from uh, the increase of level two upwards as well as from a level four perspective. So I think we need to be ready for both. Um, if you specifically come to level four, I do believe that there are some <clears throat> framework conditions that at this moment point out that uh, China and uh, North America are ahead of Europe, for sure, um, for, for the obvious um, um, examples that you are very familiar with. So I see it, uh, as of now, uh, um, being experimented faster, being looked at uh, quicker, and being implemented at the end of the day also faster in North America and China, as of today. Thank you. Maybe a very general question. Um, what is your ex uh, expectation when, uh, uh, when the uh, commercial vehicle market will recover? Or what is your general outlook for the um, next one or two years of the CV section? I think uh, the term crystal ball is used very often in our industry right now. So we have seen a tremendous situation in, in April and in May. Uh, we saw a catching up effect in, in June, July already. In September and October, for, for my division, we are on a 2019 level of septem in September and October. And, uh, but maybe that's also still a part of the recovery uh, effect in, 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 uh, of the first half of the year. The order books uh, for Q4 are good. The order books or the visibility of orders for Q1 are also on a, on a good level, but of course far away from what we have seen in 2018, for example. Uh, everything beyond is just belief. It's not really a sustainable belief in that the market is recovering uh, too much, but when we look on the usage of trucks and usage of trailers on the road, we see that uh, there, is, there are a lot of trailers already and trucks on the road. But a long-term 
visibility for 2021, for especially for the second half, we don't have yet. So, and the question is, always when will it, will it come back? So let's let's see what we have in 2021, and then we are coming closer to to pre-COVID levels. I think in 2022, on. hopefully for the truck is the first, <laughs> because that's our passion. Okay. In the meantime, as we uh, you're still able to raise your questions uh, in the tool, as um, as said, if you have any further questions. Um, in the meantime, let me make uh, one remark that also a recording of this uh, press briefing and the Q&A will be made available to you. You will uh, get a link where you can um, listen in again and, uh, and follow it. And um, yeah, another important thing is um, seen, we just talked about the, uh, the four world premieres. Obviously, it would be, have been a pleasure to showcase it live um, on, a, on site and discuss with you live and let you experience the technology. This is something we plan for the um, first quarter, end of first quarter 2021. So as we all know, it's really crucial also to you and to us that you can experience um, the technology at the, that we can really discuss it live together and um, to dig a little bit deeper on what's in for this. For the moment, as we have no more questions from your side, I have to say thank you very much for dialing in, for listening in to our um, virtual CF experience days. And um, now I invite also the, um, the colleagues from uh, media from India who've dialed in to stay tuned, staying online. After a very short break, we will also come to a specific Indian sections. For all the others, if you're interested in, for sure, you're also invited to, um, to stay with us. But if not, I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you very much for listening in. And if you have any further questions, just reach out to the um, CF communications teams. We are glad to take additional um, answers. On the press center, with a link, you will find additional material, a press release related to the presentation, the presentation, pictures, and also um, um, footage material um, of the uh, technologies we just presented here. With that, have a good day, and looking forward to talk to you in person soon. Thank you very much. Mobility means change. Change needs mobility. This is what we at ZF believe and use to orient ourselves towards a transforming future. We are driving our next generation mobility strategy forward with great passion on all levels. We operate worldwide. We are an innovative, responsible and reliable partner to our customers and our employees. Our mission is to create a new harmony between the reality of mobility and our life aspirations. We call it Mobility Life Balance. Our strategy for the implementation of this mission is Next Generation Mobility. Automated and autonomous driving are important developments that help make the traffic of the future safer, more efficient, and more comfortable. We are an attractive partner when it comes to their realization. Electric mobility. Today, we already offer electric drives for almost every means of transportation and heavy equipment. We at ZF are constantly growing our e-mobility division. Vehicle motion control. When developing any kind of vehicle, the chassis has a key role to play. ZF offers the highest competence when it comes to developing control units for optimized brakes, steering, and suspension. Integrated safety. To ZF, safe mobility means helping to protect all road users as effectively as possible. Safety technology from ZF can help prevent accidents or mitigate their consequences. 
ZF is setting the course for faster and enhanced software development. By bringing its software engineering processes, methods, and solutions to speed. ZF supplies systems for passenger cars, commercial vehicles, and industrial technology. Enabling the next generation of sustainable mobility. With our comprehensive portfolio, we offer integrated solutions for vehicle manufacturers, mobility providers, and startup companies. We are a responsible and reliable partner of society, our business associates, and our employees. We operate in a long-term and sustainable manner. We are involved in educational projects worldwide. The ZF Art Foundation supports artists, musicians, and nonprofit institutions. We strive to develop innovative and creative solutions. We think like entrepreneurs. We take risks where appropriate and learn both from successes and failures. We support and encourage our employees. We are open, curious, and agile. We are ZF. So hello and welcome back now to our second part of our Q&A session. And in a second, we will also have um, two other um, senior executives of CF with us who are happy to take specifically also Indian-related questions. This on the one hand, uh, KV, to know all of, most of you, president of uh, CF India, and on the other hand, PK, the president of Vapco India Limited, who will be, um, be with us live in a second, working on this, and then we can also start with the Q&A session here. So, welcome to KV, welcome to PK. Thanks for having you with us here in our Q&A session to India. Thank you very much. So, um, seeing we have now the four co colleagues here to take your question, and let's already start and jump in. And um, PK, one question for you, would Wapco India continue to remain listed in India? Or what are the plans there? Yeah, um, um, you know, today uh, ZF uh, has the majority uh, ownership of this Wapco uh, India business. Uh, the main focus is to continue the, continue the success of Wapco um, uh, India. Um, by uh, bringing the best of the global technologies to the Indian customers. Uh, but as far as uh, uh, the structure of the India business is concerned, uh, as per the highest standard of uh, compliance, which ZF Group follows, uh, we will communicate to any change, any communicate to the uh, the media and the stakeholders, any change in the structure as it happens, if it all, if it all happens. Uh, uh, but otherwise, our key focus right now is to continue our success of our India business. Thank you. And PK. Yeah. And um, maybe can I add one question in this, PK, for you? Um, what will happen to the existing Webco India employees? Are there any plans to change the workforce there? Uh, right now, uh, uh, WAPCO, uh, uh, the CVCS division at the global level is uh, at the 10th division of uh, ZF, and uh, the integration work is going on at the global level. Um, so as far as India is concerned, the market is uh, recovering. Um, we are trying to, again, uh, uh, position ourselves to succeed in this recovering market. So the as far as employees are concerned, uh, it is uh, uh, the focus is on uh, driving the success in India. Thank you, PK. Um, KV, there's a uh, question more generic, of generic nature. The um, um, 
the CV industry is still to recover. What do you expect how the market, especially in, uh, in India, is going forward? And um, what do you think about CF's market perspectives? I think we have some technical so problems. Maybe. Let's give you a minute. You know, it's really live. You can see that we <laughs> died you in from um, Pune and Chennai as well here from uh, uh, southern Germany where the uh, CF headquarters is located. So, um, and, and while we are waiting for, for KV uh, yeah. to connect, uh, of course, a very warm welcome to, to all the um, colleagues there from India. Um, and to reiterate what we said before, Andreas and myself, it is very important for the commercial vehicle business to be very close, as close as possible, to the customers, to understand what's going on in all regions, and now specifically in India, um, and to understand what are the specifics of these markets, and that's mm. why we have continuously supporting um, the setups and, and the and the power that um, our gentlemen KV and PK have in India to drive forcefully um, the market, also in the recovery phase, which obviously KV and PK are coming uh, to now, um, under the very, very difficult times in the last months. But we do see um, light at the end of the tunnel, for sure. And uh, India is, uh, as you all know, one of the most important uh, commercial vehicle markets in the world. What we have seen in the past 12, 16, 18 months, of course, is what was a heavy shock for, for all of us. Um, but as I said, it's the most uh, important commercial vehicle in the market. I think uh, from, from my division's perfect perspective, I think together with Wapco, we can do things better, much better. We, we have to accept uh, that the, car, the, the market and the technology demands are different, but we also see a trend towards uh, uh, higher technology as well, but we have to anticipate that the Indian market is, is and accept that the Indian market is a, a highly cost-orientated market as well, and we have to find solutions for that. Pipe, make a, I can jump in and raise another question to you, PK. Is, um, um, do we already see or have you planned any changes in your, um, in your customer approach, how you um, go towards customers? Do we see any changes with the, uh, after the acquisition of CF? The customer expectation is uh, essentially uh, to, 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 to continue the Labco uh, way of uh, strong customer centricity and to make sure there is a, there is a continuity in, in our approach uh, with, with uh, minimal or no disturbance to the customers. That exactly what uh, Zerab has been right now doing uh, during the uh, during the uh, you know the integration process. Our communication to all customers is that uh, it's business as usual. And um, they can uh, they can expect the same or a better level of service uh, with uh, the seamless support system that uh, we are setting up. And actually, Indian market has actually moved to BS6 regulations, effective uh, uh, April 2020. We have done an excellent job of actually making sure all the customers are able to provide it with all the uh, technologies uh, at the price points they expected. So also now, um, you know, the Indian market also not only following the global trends in terms of technologies and safety and efficiency, but also moving in the autonomous connected and efficiency uh, electric uh, trends. We are uh, partnering with all the customers and providing support in the connected vehicle programs. Uh, we are also working with some of the customers who are into the electric bus programs with electrics, electric technologies that are uh, uh, in our portfolio right now. Also getting ready to support uh, all their future uh, technology requirements. Peaky. So, um, 
you already tackled the um, the aspect of immobility. So now oh, it's not stable. So <laughs> worked pretty out well, but uh, um, but maybe um, I want to raise the question to you, KV, but uh, maybe uh, Andreas, you can jump yeah. in when it comes to electromobility and we showcase already some of the um, the, uh, the drive lines or the, the um, solutions we, uh, we generally developed here. Um, did you, the question is, uh, did you already tie up with any CV maker in India for the solutions? Yeah. So um, we have a couple of, of, of product solutions you, you have seen during the, the press conferences. Um, we see, for especially for the Indian market, uh, the need for e-mobility, but of course on a different level of power rating and on a different level of cost. Um, this is why we have developed uh, a, a central drive, which is meeting uh, these requirements, lower power rating significantly reduced cost um, and uh, we have very good uh, project discussions with one of the leading OEs uh, in India so I'm, I'm, I'm very positive regarding that development because it meets really the, the local Indian demands. But you cannot disclose the name of the customer. Oh, well, uh, we, are, we are not allowed to disclose that as long as we have not, uh, as the customer has not published that. Yeah. But there are not too many for this. big ones. Yeah. <laughs> we could talk about the technology, and you've seen we are, we are in it, but stay tuned then to the, um, to the name of the customer, to our partner, to push forward electrification also in India. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Frederick, um, you know, um, we see also, or especially in India, a lot of, uh, of startups in the CV space. Yeah, from a divisional perspective, and maybe we can also get a more, more local or continent perspective from UPK, then is CF looking to supply, um, first of all, to support um, uh, startups, to uh, liaise with them, to work with them, or even in the very end, to uh, supply complete drive line or control systems, such a braking system or something? Yeah, I think um, the first answer is generally open for any kind of collaboration because the, the journey of, uh, of ACE, of automation, electrification and digitization in India is going to be, is going to be uh, not an easy one. It's going to be uh, just as it is worldwide. It's going, to, it's going to require some breath and it's going to require a lot of collaboration. But uh, what is fascinating about India specifically, in my opinion, is the the speed um, of finding solutions specifically for the Indian market. And there we need to think about not only the products, the components and the vehicles, but also the whole infrastructure and what's changing there on the infrastructure side um, in regards to uh, new players coming up, um, managing, managing the challenges of uh, the entire infrastructure for new technologies as well as existing ones. And PK, I think uh, maybe a couple of words from your side, but that's where we're incredibly open to see where we can meet the customer requirements. And you've seen some very exciting, uh, I think, YouTube videos and other things on social media where we're supporting customers also in, in digital solutions uh, together with the customer develop something that at the end of the day, again, increases uptime for our partners. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick. Actually, the, in the area of uh, connected vehicle programs, we find uh, the solution need to be local, uh, uh, focusing on the customer's specific requirements. Uh, in such a case, we had to actually take the support of the startups here, both for uh, the, soft, the hardware and the software requirements, partnering with uh, the OEMs, also taking the global uh, capability of uh, uh, ZF and Macom. Uh, we are launching such programs in Indian market because a lot of things are market specific, regional specific requirements, uh, particularly in the area of uh, digital and connected vehicle uh, programs. Um, in the area of uh, electric vehicles, um, we have already acquired a, a few technologies in both the electronic braking systems, e compressor, etc. Of course, a lot of portfolio of products from the ZF range. Uh, I'm sure the Indian customers will be extremely benefited by these advanced technologies as the industry moves 
towards more and more uh, electric, at least in the bus segment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Andreas, you've been quite positive and, um, and optimistic about the electrification in the Indian market. Um, you stick to your opinion, even uh, having seen that the, uh, that the CV sales in India collapsed? Yeah, we have seen collapses around the world, so that's one, one thing. And uh, of course, the collapse in, in, in India was, was... But uh, with all the, the pollution we have around the world and uh, with, a, with a high population in such a country, I think there is no other way than to electrify. Uh, but of course, to be realistic, what's possible on the Indian roads, uh, realistic uh, when it comes to infrastructure, but there is a clear trend towards e-mobility as well, and we see this also coming from increasing number of projects we have with, with local OEs over there. But given the low price points of vehicle sales in India, um, is it not the case that the traditional uh, diesel or gasoline-powered drive chain will, as a let's say, less sophisticated technology, even if highly developed, mm -hmm. is likely to continue in India for a couple of decades? I wouldn't, a couple of decades, I wouldn't say. But uh, of course, uh, in such a huge country with uh, such a high population, you cannot change the world within five years, N not within 10 years, maybe. Uh, but when I look on the project portfolio we have right now in India, it's mostly around uh, all the new trends, autonomous, connected, and, and, and Immobility, e we will see a bridging period when we come from manual transmissions to automated transmissions. Uh, but uh, all new projects are going around the new technologies, also in India. I, I'm just thinking about our um, introductory words of mobilizing commercial vehicle intelligence. And I think if uh, you look at India, that's fitting perfectly. Yeah? Um, mobilizing commercial vehicle intelligence in the Indian um, economy, uh, of course, will rebound. Yeah? Um, right now, the focus is on protecting also the health of companies, the health of employees, the health of the people, but it will rebound, and in the rebound, exactly this intelligence and the frugal engineering that we have uh, as capabilities in our, in our entities in India, um, the mindset of uh, frugal engineering, the mindset of driving intelligence into the system uh, is very, very specific to India. And I think this will prevail uh, to bring good solutions and drive also the technology trends of the future, sometimes even faster uh, in this, in this uh, wonderful country than in others. PK. Yes, uh, Frederick. Actually, the uh, Indian industry follows the European trends, of course, with a big uh, gap. Uh, you know, in terms of safety, the, when the new government came into power, they were very keen on bringing in all the safety technologies because the government was very serious about reducing the road accidents. So uh, there are quite a few technologies uh, are mandated because in India, all the safety technologies are mandated and then it comes to the market. So 2015, ABS was uh, mandated. So APCO played a very key role in bringing those technologies to the Indian market. But till, at the time, there was not even a test track in India, Vapco had the technology, uh, test track, it's even the government had to use it. Today, government has invested on many more uh, uh, test tracks under the NATRIP scheme, um, but uh, we facilitated bringing the ABS to uh, come to the Indian market. Um, uh, subsequently, now there are many new safety technologies. Uh, electronic stability control has been mandated for 2023 for the M3 buses. Um, we believe uh, on the safety, uh, India will rapidly uh, move and close the gap with Europe, um, particularly because of the largest number of road fatalities in India, um, which is very much uh, seized or sensed by the government, and they are very serious about it. In terms of uh, efficiency, if you look at it, um, India is already Euro 6 uh, compliant, um, but now uh, there are um, uh, the phase two of uh, Euro 6 and RDE and uh, CAFE norms are going to come next uh, uh, few years. Uh, but the challenge is uh, all these technologies uh, have to be provided at a price point that the market will accept. 
Uh, that is where uh, Zeref will be, uh, Zeref and Mapco or the CVCS organization will be able to support the customer with our uh, very strong uh, uh, local footprint and uh, uh, the uh, strong engineering and uh, uh, engineering capability with our uh, uh, you know, customer partnership that we have created over all, with all the customers over the years. Uh, so we will enable all the customers to uh, to, to bring uh, bring all these technologies as the industry evolves. So we are very well positioned to handle that requirement. PK, you've talked about the footprint in India of um, our com combined forces in India now. And um, here's a question maybe to both of you, Andreas and Frederick. Will we continue with all the plants in India or uh, do you plan any uh, uh, optimization or rationalization? Um, no, we have so much growth ahead of us and we have so much uh, dire need of availing of the the capacities and uh, the capabilities of our Indian footprint, uh, may it be in sites, may it be in engineering resources, hardware and software, um, that um, we want to continue to use uh, what we have there. We want to we continue to use the test track capabilities, the engineering centers that we have in, in Hyderabad, in Chennai, and in some other places, we want to continue to use the footprints that we have available, you know, in Chennai and surroundings, as well as in Pune. I think the growth path, the runway ahead of us, requires to get all hands on deck and continue uh, in India with the existing um, capacities and footprint and, and further enhance that. Yeah, of course, uh, on the long run, we will try to, to optimize also the, the footprint. I'm not talking about big changes. I'm talking about using synergies. Um, I think that's, that's quite normal and everybody expects that after such a merger. But uh, especially when it comes to India, I think we have to keep our presence with the customers and so I don't see any reason to reduce that. We, we, we have to increase even the customer proximity. Uh, yeah. So how would you evaluate the importance of India for CF's growth targets in the CV division as you've presented or we've discussed a couple of minutes ago? Yeah, uh, when it comes to the T division, which is taking care about uh, all the driveline issues, the chassis systems as well, I think we have a huge growth potential over there and um, the, we, we, we have to develop that market and develop our products and our cost according to that market. So uh, India is one of the key areas around the world. We have made significant impro improvements when it comes to Western markets, uh, Eastern markets. Uh, definitely India is a huge growth potential for us. And I think we can share resources, we can share expertise uh, with, with the CBCS division and that's a lot of synergies uh, are ahead of us. So, PK, um, maybe you can uh, can add and elaborate a little bit on what is the importance of India for the global supply chain, according to your perspective, to uh, supply um, the global markets. What is your expectation in this regard? No, the Indian uh, auto component industry is actually uh, uh, in, through its uh, frugal uh, and. Uh, uh, innovative approach of addressing the cost uh, actually be uh, already uh, a part of a global supply chain. Um, uh, so now with uh, Euro 6 uh, uh, technologies and some of the safety technologies, uh, uh, the uh, India is a part of the, it becomes a, a part of the global supply chain already. Mapco uh, or CCS division already we are uh, we have become um, center of excellence for some of the global Mapco products and uh, manufacturing in India and already exporting. Um, that coupled with our uh, Indian um, uh, engineering capability, we are also developing, uh, designing and developing products for global markets from here. Um, I see uh, again a very positive uh, trend going forward. Uh, those capabilities uh, will be effectively used, uh, can be used for Zerub also. Um, we are very, very highly competitive. Uh, 
also uh, uh, the competitiveness is coming through our frugal innovation plus uh, the uh, engineering and manufacturing strength that we built here, which I'm sure will be uh, a strong support to Zeraf success globally. Thank you very much, PK. So for the moment, um, I have seen no further questions. If you have any hot burning questions also in regard of India, anything else, please raise your question right now. We're still there to take these questions. Um, while you can reflect on this and maybe type in your questions, um, I can uh, also inform you that we also plan to uh, let you experience this uh, technology first and also in India. You know, um, we have to look um, um, into the um, general circumstances when it's able to, uh, um, to host you on our premises and to give you first-hand insights and uh, live discussions with our engineers as you are used to have uh, from CF and also from, from Wapco. Hopefully in the near future. Hopefully, yes. We're really looking forward to this and also to have a, a really in-depth live discussion for you to be continued. Um, at this point of time, I thank you very much for dialing in, for raising your questions, to discussing with us. And um, also for you, if you have any further questions in the um, afterwards, please don't hesitate to contact the CF corporate communications team, the CF um, um, or WAPCO communication teams in India, and we are happy to take your question and to support you in the best way. Also for you, again, the, uh, um, um, the hint that you will find additional material, apart from a press release on the um, CF Press Center, CF. Um, um, pre press.cf.com. And um, we're looking forward to talk to you in person and to keep in touch with you again. Thank you very much for listening in, for discussing with us, and take care and talk to you soon. Greetings to India.